A few weeks ago, I bought this, the cheapest 2013 Mac Pro on eBay, and it was not good. However, today we're gonna give it a fair shake by upgrading it to the Max with a 12 core processor. So when this guy came out back in 2013, the base model was equipped with a quad-core processor, and there are a shocking amount of those that are still out there. It's really not a very good processor. It performs pretty similar to an Ivy Bridge Core i7, which is old, not particularly outstanding in any way, really. The processor itself costs 20 bucks on eBay. Now don't get me wrong, for 20 bucks, that's a very good deal for that processor, but a $20 CPU in a $1,200 computer a little questionable. However, fortunately, as I mentioned in the last episode, the Trashcan Mac Pro has some upgradability. The RAM and SSD are pretty cheap and easy to upgrade, especially with the help of an adapter that lets you put literally any NVMe SSD in this machine. So you could have a couple terabytes of storage and you can have up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty solid. And you can also upgrade the CPU, which thanks to the magic of time, is only about $170 for a 12 core 24 thread processor. Unfortunately, however, the process of upgrading the CPU is a lot more involved than the RAM and SSD, which really don't take much work at all. So without any further ado, let's upgrade this Mac Pro. Disassembling the Mac Pro starts by removing the casing and twirling out the five T10 screws that hold the fan housing in place. Once open, there are two T7 screws holding a retainer for the fan connector and the antenna connector. After that, the fan assembly is free. At this point, it's probably a good idea to clean out said fan. Mine was absolutely filthy, so we should get better airflow now that the caked up dust is gone. Next, we have five more T10 screws that secure the bottom cover to the chassis. This unit contains the air intake vents, which could also use some dust removal. In fact, the whole interior of this machine is a rat's nest of dust and debris. With that cleaned out, it's time to remove the interconnect board, which snaps onto the two graphics boards. Two T7 screws hold it in place, and with them removed, we can disconnect the I.O. board from the underside. Now we can get a better look at the Darth Vader heatsink that comprises the unified thermal architecture of this rather unique workstation. Let's flip it over and unscrew two T5 screws that hold the power supply cage on. Inside we'll find four T8 screws that connect the PSU to the chassis. There's two more on the left side that we'll remove after the PSU is out. Now that those screws are out, we can remove the PSU from the Mac, but make sure to watch out for the exposed innards at both ends. Next, we need to remove the logic board and the CPU from the heatsink. The CPU is held on with eight T10 screws. The outer four hold it to the heatsink, so we'll remove them first. Once they're gone, the logic board is only secured to the heatsink by the thermal paste on the CPU, so it comes off very easily. Now, the logic board is free, but the CPU is still mounted to it, so we'll take off the remaining four T10 screws and then remove the retaining bracket, the CPU backplate, and then we can lift the logic board off of the CPU. Finally, we'll wipe off the thermal paste from the heatsink and the Mac Pro is fully disassembled. That's a lot of disassembly to get at the CPU in this machine, one of the reasons why this design was so unpopular. Speaking of which, let's see our much improved 12 core 24 thread monster that's going to make this a much more powerful machine. This Xeon E5 2697V2 should demolish the old processor. Reassembling this machine is quite frustrating. Getting the CPU bracket and logic board reattached was really annoying. But once I got that out of the way, we can reassemble our new and improved 12 core Mac Pro. So regardless of the conclusions that we can draw about the overall package of this 2013 Mac Pro, I am very impressed with the value of the Xeon E5 2697V2 CPU. 
I'm actually kind of amazed at how well it performs for $175. And sure, the single threaded performance isn't fantastic. It's still, after all, an Ivy Bridge era CPU. However, the single threaded performance isn't bad and the multi-threaded performance is excellent. In Geekbench 4, we get a score of 30,000, and Geekbench 5 scores 7,000, which is pretty similar to the Core i9 16-inch MacBook Pro, and not too far behind the i9 iMac, and even the base iMac Pro. Those are impressive numbers considering this machine's age and cost. Cinebench also shows an impressive 3240CB, putting it close to eight core i9 MacBooks, and again, behind the i9 iMac and base iMac Pro. It is worth noting that when you compare this particular Mac Pro to the only other desktop besides the new Mac Pro that Apple sells, the 2018 Mac Mini, we outperform every single version of it. Under sustained load, the Mac Pro handles these 12 cores with ease. It boosts up 300 megahertz over the 2.7 gigahertz base clock speed and sustains that load indefinitely. More impressive though are the temperatures. Even after back to back to back to back Cinebench runs for 20 minutes, it peaks at 74 degrees Celsius. That is insane for a Mac. The thermal architecture may have been a limitation for the versatility of this machine, but it's definitely good at keeping the CPU running well. I should also mention that those CPU temps are all at idle fan speeds. Even if you run Cinebench back to back, the fan doesn't ramp up. We're currently six Cinebench runs in. This is the sound coming out of the machine. Nothing. And this is peak fan noise. This is the loudest the machine gets. And strangely, maxing out the fan doesn't improve the CPU temps. They stay at 74 degrees, although it does cool down a lot faster once the load stops, which makes sense. So for overall value, how does this stack up? Well, my total cost for this machine was $1,370, and it offers performance that's actually remarkably close in terms of graphics, CPU, storage, and RAM to a 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro. Even accounting for the wild depreciation on those 15-inch MacBooks, this is significantly less expensive, and it also undercuts well-equipped 4K iMacs while packing better CPU performance. The main downside to this machine is the age and the graphics, plus the fact that you'll have to buy a separate mouse and keyboard. So the big question is, is it worth it? Well, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying a 12-core Mac Pro. Most of them are over $2,000, and the value is questionable at that point, even given the fact that some of those are probably gonna have more RAM, larger SSD, maybe the better graphics, what have you. However, I think in this scenario, paying under $1,400 and upgrading it yourself, there are some situations where I could see that making sense, provided, of course, you are able to undertake the pretty intense disassembly that is required to do it. It would be a lot easier to recommend doing this if it weren't for the graphical limitations this weird and funky machine has. Upgrading this machine to the D500 or D700 graphics is a no-go because they are prohibitively expensive to get a hold of. However, you can add an eGPU to boost compute performance. As with a lot of things about this machine, it is old, we're running Thunderbolt 2, so you're gonna lose probably almost 30% of your GPU performance if you do that. So even that might not be the most cost effective compared to getting a 2018 Mac mini with a Core i7, where you'll lose less GPU performance over a Thunderbolt 3 connection compared to Thunderbolt 2. So here's my take on this. I think for most cases, buying a 5K iMac or a 4K iMac or even a 2018 Mac mini would probably be a better bet. And sure, this is less expensive than a Core i9 iMac. This is less expensive than a Core i7 4K iMac. But let's not forget that we are limited by the age of this machine in what we can do with it. And it's important not to underestimate the cost of a monitor. If you don't have a monitor and you're buying a whole setup, you're gonna have to add a couple hundred bucks for a nice monitor if you wanna use this thing for professional tasks, content creation, and that sort of thing. If you already have like a MacBook Pro and an LG Ultrafine 5K display and you wanna do something with this, buy a quad core, upgrade it to a 12 core, I think it's actually pretty decent value. Huh, that's weird.
Is this, is this a situation where a trash can Mac Pro might actually make sense? Hmm. Kind of a surprising note to end on, but that'll do it. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else that you'd like to see me do with this 12 core Mac Pro. And as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please consider following me on Twitter, at Luke Miani. And don't forget to check out my subreddit if you have any questions. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.